Hello, welcome to Excel Tips by the HR Diary. Today, I'm going to show you step by step how to build an interactive HR dashboard in Excel. This dashboard will help you to answer questions such as what is your age distribution? What is your performance rating distribution? What is your compound ratio by tenure? What is your headcount? What is your average age? What is your total salary? What is your average rating, performance rating? And what is your compound ratio? And I will show you how to use the dashboard to answer these questions by company level or by departments like finance, HR, or IT. And you can also analyze it, analyze all this by the gender, be it female or male. Let's start by designing the top part of the dashboard. Let's click on the plus sign at the bottom here. And this will open a new sheet. Let's rename it as dashboard. Now I want to remove these grid lines. To do it, go to view. All right. And you can see under the view, there is these grid lines. Untick it. So now we have a blank nice sheet. Next, click on the top left-hand corner of this spreadsheet down here to select the whole spreadsheet. Go to the whole menu. And I want to fill it all with this green, light green color. So next, let's select cell B1 to Q1 here. And then go to the home menu. Go to the home uh, menu. And then this uh, merge and center. Let's merge it. Then next, go to here, team color. Let's put it as yellow. So let's create the header for this dashboard. I shall call it the interactive HR dashboard. Let's bold it and let's increase the font size to 26. Looks a bit big. Maybe let's put it as 20. So now let's select here. Uh, oops, okay, here to mm, not so much. Let's make my screen a little bit smaller. To here, and let's view it with white. All right, so this is my dashboard. Let's go to my data sheet here. So here I have a list of employees. I have their mm -hmm. department, the name, the date that they join, the tenure, means how long they are with the company, their gender, the birth date, the age, the date that they join the company, their job level or job grade. And this is the midpoint of the job grade. So each job grade has a midpoint, like job level two, the midpoint is 6,183, right? So this is the midpoint of the job level. And the salary of each staff, their compound ratio and their rating. So notice that I have this, uh, Compound ratio. So what, what is compound ratio? Compound ratio, your compound ratio is your salary divided 
by the midpoint of your pay band. Compound ratio indicates how far your salary is from the midpoint of your pay band. So as you can see from my spreadsheet, if I put my cursor here, this cell, you can see the formula here, right? So this compound ratio, it actually takes the staff salary, which is 9,200, divided by the midpoint of the pay band. And the midpoint of the staff pay band is 7,651. So the compound ratio is 1.20. So this is how the compound ratio is calculated. So now, for example, if if your salary is 7,000 and the midpoint of your pay band is 1,000, so your compound ratio will be is 700, your salary is 700 divided by 1,000, which is 0 0.7. A compound ratio of 0 0.7 means that your pay is 70% from the midpoint or the market average for the job. So next. If your salary is 1,000 and the midpoint of your pay band is 1,000, then your compound ratio is 1.0. It's exactly 1.0. A compound ratio of 1.0 means that your pay is exactly at the midpoint of your pay band. Another example. So if your salary is 1,003 and the midpoint of your pay band is 1,000, so your compound ratio is 1,003 divided by 1,000, which is 1.3. A compound ratio of 1.3 means that the employee's pay is 130% from the midpoint or from the market average of the job. Now, I want to use this data, the data in this data sheet to analyze this the age distribution of our employees. So how do we do that? First, we need to format this data, the data in this data sheet as a table. To do that, click on any cell in this table. Don't click outside here. Click any cell in this table. Go to insert menu. Then click on the table you will see that the create table dialog box pops up and it selects the range of the whole table. All right. It automatically selects the range of the whole table where a cell is. And my cell, my this data has headers. So I will click here that my table has headers and click. Okay, once I click, okay, you see a nicely formatted table. So why would you want to format your data into a table? Formatting your data into a table in Excel simplifies the referencing of data. Excel automatically assigns a name to the range of cells that make up the table, which you can use in formulas and functions instead of having to reference, reference the cells addresses directly. So for example, you, you, if you look at, when you click here and you look at the table design, the table name that they call it is table one. So when you, whenever you type table one, Excel knows that it's referring to this, this table. All right. So when you click outside here, it doesn't show. When you click in here, it will show you that this table is called table one. All right. So next time you can just, when you, when you type table one, Excel knows that you're referring to this table and we'll use the data in this table. Other than table one, let's call it, I want to call it data sheet. So we recognize what the table is this called. So this is data sheet. So I've changed the name to call data sheet. Next, to create the H distribution, so I click anywhere here, go to the insert and click on pivot table. So notice Excel selects the data sheet table. Data sheet, remember, it selects, it refers to, to this, all right? 
Okay, so this is the data sheet. And then where do I want to place the data, the keyword table? I want to place it in an existing worksheet, which is in this dashboard. So, so the location, then I click on to location. I go to dashboard. And I want to place it on C6. So I click place here and hit enter on my keyboard and click on O. Okay. So this is my pivot table area. So click anywhere in this pivot table area. You'll see the pivot table fields popping up. Let me adjust it. All right. So when you click on here, anywhere on this pivot table area, click onto here. And then you can see this pivot table analyze and the pivot table. And they call this pivot table name pivot table one. Let's change it to call pivot table H. Okay, so now this pivot table, the name is called pivot table H. So I want to see H. So in this one, I will search for H. I take the H, I drag it. Let's take this one. Let's drag it to here, H. You will see the different ages that we have in a company, starting from 29 all the way to 60. Right? So you list down all the ages. Next, drag the H to values. And you'll see that it gives you the sum of H, the sum of H. I don't want that. I want it to count how many people are at age 29, for example, and how many people are at age 30. So to change from sum to count, click onto this, click on to value setting, and select count, and click OK. So when I click OK, you can see that there's one staff who is age 29, one staff who is age 30, three staff who is age 35. And a lot of staff, about five are age 38. But this is too granular. So how can we group these ages? We can do this by right clicking anywhere on the row labels of this previous table and select group. After you click, click on to the group, you will see this grouping dialog box. I want the H bracket to start at 20. So I'll type in 20 here. And I want the H bracket to end at, say, 70. So I'll enter 70 here under ending at. And I want increments of 10. So I'll put 10 at the by field and then click OK. And there, there we go. So we can see that we have one staff in age 20 to 29. And we have 15 staff in the age bracket 30 to 39, etc. Next, rather than having it called row labels, I want to rename this to H. So we just click onto this and type H. And this count of H, let's rename it to H count. Now, you can move the table by clicking anywhere in the pivot table. Go to pivot table analyze. All right. And then click on to move pivot table. So
So for example, I can click on to where you want to put it. I can say, click it here. This is the location. And when you click OK, the table pivot table moves here. Another way of moving the pivot table is you can drag, just drag it here. All right. Oops. Okay, now I want this to be white. So I just drag the color here. And I want this green. Let's drag the color here. Okay. So now we can visualize this pivot table by putting our cursor anywhere inside this pivot table. Go to insert and go to the insert the bar chart. Select cast, cluster column and here's your bar chart. So if I want to add the headcount in this bar chart, right, you can click on the table, go to design, add chart element, data labels, and select the inside and and now you can see how many staff there are so age 20 to 29 there is one staff 30 to 39 15 staff which is similar to here these bars are very narrow so if you want to change the width of the bars right click onto them select format data series All right, this pivot table is blocking me. Let me close this. Okay, so you have format data series, and this gap width, change it to hundred percent, and then just click anywhere here, and you can see the width changes. And I want to rename the title, so I click onto it, and I type H. I don't want this uh legend to show because it's only one series. So I can click on this table, click onto the plus and untick the legend. So I can adjust the size and move it here. Next, I want to analyze, so this is the age. I want to analyze the ratings of our employees. To do this, we need to create another pivot table. So let's go to our data sheet. Click anywhere in this table, not outside it. Click anywhere inside it. Go to insert. Click onto pivot table. Then click on to Existing worksheet, the location, I want it in here. So I just click here and click OK. So this is my, my pivot table area. OK, let's close this. All right, so click onto this pivot table a area, go to pivot table analyze, pivot table, and you see that the name of this pivot table, they just call it pivot table two. So this name is not very user, not very easy to, to know, not intuitive. So I want to change it to pivot table rating okay so this is pivot table h this is pivot table rating so this is my pivot table rating i want to see the different ratings so when i click onto this it shows the pivot table fields here these are the fields 
All right, so I want to see rating. So let me find the rating. So rating is here. So I drag rating to the rows. All right, you drag it here. So the ratings one to five appear here. And I want to rename this instead of having it called rating row labels, let's call it rating. So we have the rating, but I want to know how many of these ratings we have. How many people are rated in rating one? How many people are rated in rating two? All this. So to do this, I need to drag the rating into the values. And you will see that it gives you sum of rating. I don't want that. I don't want the sum. I want the count. So I, I click this, select value field settings, select count and click OK. And you will see count of rating. This Let's rename this count of rating to number of staff. So now you can see that three staff are rated one, three staff are rated two, 18 staff are rated three, child staff rated four, and three staff are rated five. Next, I want to add a percentage column here in this rating pivot table. So how do we do it? To do this, Again, you drag the rating into the values. So you will see that it gives you sum of rating. I don't want this, so let's click onto this. And click onto the value field setting. So I, I still want it to, to summarize values by sum. But then let's click onto this part. They have another part here, show values as. All right, under this show values as, choose percentage of grand total. When you click OK, you will see the percentages. So let's rename sum of rating to percentage of staff. Now I want to remove these decimal points. So to remove these decimal points, you can go to this, click onto it, click value start, view ratings, and you can see the number format. Click onto it, click percentage, decimal points, change it to zero, zero decimal points. Click OK and OK. Yep, there you have it. So next, we can visualize this by putting our cursor anywhere in this pivot table. Go to pivot table analyze. And in this menu, and then click on pivot chart. The chart that I want is a combo chart. So we click on the combo chart. The number of staff we want to use a cluster column the percentage of staff, we can use a line, and but you put it as secondary axis. So you have percentage here as a secondary axis. And click OK. So here's your combo chart. All right. And if you want to add numbers inside the bar, click on the table. Go to design, add chart element, data labels, inside N. Now you can see how many staff are there in each rating. So if I want to change the width of the bars, right click on them, click format data series, and this one, change it to 100%. Then click outside it. And I don't want to see this legend. Wait, okay. So I don't want to see this legend. Click on the plus and untick the legend total. 
then you can adjust the size of it. All right. So we have the H distribution, we have the rating distribution. Next, I want to analyze the compound ratio by tenure. To do this, we need to create another pivot table. So how do we do? Again, we go to data sheet, click anywhere in the table, click onto insert, click onto pivot table. And again, I want it into an existing worksheet. The location, I want it in the dashboard. And this time I want it at this M6 here. And then you hit enter in your keyboard. All right. And you click OK. So next with your cursor here in this pivot table 3, go to pivot table analyze, go to pivot table. And I want to change this name to a more intuitive name rather than just table pivot table three. Let's name it pivot table tenure. Right. So it changes to pivot table tenure. This is my pivot table area. I want to see the different tenure. Tenure means uh, the years of service of the, the employees is with the company. So to see tenure, let me look for tenure while keeping my cursor inside this pivot table area. Let me scroll to find the tenure. And then here it is, tenure, All right? So I can click on it, okay? And I want it in the rows, let's drag it here in the rows. So here you can see the different tenure zero tenure up to a maximum of 23 tenure. Again, this is too granular, like H just now was very granular. So I want to group this. How do we do it? We can do it by right clicking anywhere in these row labels. All right. Sorry. So we we right click it and we put the select this grouping and I want the tenure bracket to start at zero so I leave it as zero and I want the age bracket to end at you see the maximum is 23 here so let's end at 25 and I think let's try to have increments by five and click OK. All right. So there it is. And this um, row labels, let's rename it to tenure. So we have the tenure here. So remember, I want to analyze the compound ratio by tenure. I want to know what is the compound ratio for each of these tenure bracket. To do this, let's look for the compound ratio. There it is. So let's click onto this and drag it onto the values. So you'll see that it gives you sum of compound ratio. This is not what I want. I want the average compound ratio. So what, what do I do? So I click on it again, click on to value setting and look for average, select it and click OK. And you see the average rating. So this is a bit, it's difficult to see. So to remove the decimal points, let's again click, go to here, click on the value setting, click on number format. All right, and this I want it in the numbers, but I only want two decimal points and click on OK and OK. So here it is. 
the average of compound ratio. The Okay, now we can visualize this by putting our cursor anywhere in this pivot table here and then go to insert and I want to insert a bar chart cluster column. So I click onto it and you have, here's your bar chart. So again, if you want to add numbers inside this chart, make sure you click on this table, go to design, add chart element, data labels, inside N. And now you can see the compile ratio, zero to four, Yes, is 1.03 compound ratio. You can see it all here. All right. So you can see the longer the tenure, people who have been here for 20, 25 years, the longer the tenure, the lower the compound ratio. The shorter the tenure, the higher the compound ratio. So this is probably due to salary comp compression, right? When people stay too long in a company, sometimes their salary may grow slower. Now, if I want to change the width of the bars, right click on them, click onto format data series, and this gap width, I change it to 100%. And then I click anywhere here and it changes. And I want to rename this title, click onto the total, and let's type compare ratio by tenure all right so we can resize this i want to close this otherwise it's it's a little cluttered let's do some adjustment yes i want to remove this table this total, which is not necessary. So I can click on this plus sign and untick the legend. So let's move this here. All right. So now, next. I want to add the headcount in the dashboard. So let's type headcount in B2. Um, tell you what, let's put this part. At, let's color it as green as well and let me type the head count here make sure that is a uh, center aligned and this um, next cell here let's select here Go to the home button and let's put it as let's fill it up as yellow and let's create some tick outside borders. So now how do we draw the head count data into this interactive dashboard? We need to create another pivot table. So to do this, let's go back to data sheet, click anywhere in the table. Then go to insert menu, click pivot table. So I want it in a new worksheet. So I will click on to make sure I take new worksheet and click OK. So I have a new worksheet. So let's rename this worksheet as pivot table. So click onto the pivot table 
here. All right, and then let's drag the name into. No, no. Let's see. Um, we have renamed this as the pivot table. Um, okay. Let's drag the name into the values, and you see that it gives you count of name. That's what I want. All right. So next. We go to pivot table analyze and change the pivot table name to pivot instead of pivot table four. Let's call it pivot table head count. All right? So now let's go back to my dashboard. I want to pull out the head count from my pivot table. To do that, your cursor here, type equal, and then go back to your pivot table sheet to link it to count of name by clicking it here, and then hit enter. And you can see, here's the head count. Now I can format it by going to the home button. Okay, and then um, maybe I can center align it. All right, so I have the headcount here. Next, I want to add average age to this dashboard. So to do that, we can, in this cell, type average age. We can center align it. And then at the cell below it, go to the home menu, click on to view yellow and I want take outside borders. So again, we need to draw the average age data into this interactive dashboard. So to do this, we need to create another pivot table. So let's again go to data sheet, click anywhere inside the table, go to insert, click pivot table. This time we click existing worksheet. Then click on to location, go to the pivot table, and let's locate it here. Hit enter on your keyboard and click OK. So click onto this pivot table area. Look for the H. So I found the H drag the H into values, right? So you see that it give you the, let's drag this, the count of H. I don't want that, I want the average. So I click onto this, select value view setting, select average and click OK. So now next, let's, well, while clicking this, go to pivot table analyze, pivot table, and change this pivot table name to pivot table H. Now let's go back to our dashboard. So here I want to pull up the average H for my pivot table. So to do that, click onto this, enter equal, go back to your pivot table sheet and link it to this average H and hit enter on your keyboard. So as you can see, here's the average H. So, but there's so too many numbers here. So we can format it by going to home and then change the format to number. And we can remove the decimal points and we can center it. Next, I want to add, now I have hit count, I have average H. I want to add average rating in the dashboard. To do that, 
let's type average rating here. Then, and in this cell below, let's go to the home menu. Let's click to yellow and let's have tick outside borders. So again, to draw the average rating into this interactive dashboard, we need to create another pivot table. So let's again go to the data sheet. Click anywhere in the table. Go to insert menu, tick pivot table. And I want it in an existing worksheet. The location, I want it in this pivot table here. So I click here. This is the place I want to park it. Hit enter on your keyboard and hit OK. So again, you have this pivot table area. Click onto it. Let's look for rating. It should be at my bottom here. So rating is here. Drag it into values. You'll see that it gives you sum of rating. I don't want that. I want average. So I click onto this value setting and change it to average and hit OK. Now, while clicking onto here, this thing here, go to this pivot table analyze, pivot table, and I want to rename this pivot table name to pivot table rating. Now, go back to my, the dashboard. So I want to pull up the average rating for my pivot table here. So again, I do that by clicking this cell and typing equals, click onto my pivot table, link it to this cell here and hit enter on your keyboard. So as you can see, here's the average rating. Now we can format by going to the home and change the format to numbers and rating. All right, I want it two decimal points, so that's fine. And I want to center align it. So we have head count, we have average age, we have average rating. Next, I want to add total salary in the dashboard. So let's type total salary here and hit enter. So now I want to format this. So click onto this, go to home, click yellow, and this click tick outside orders. So again, how do you draw total salary into this interactive dashboard? We need to create another pivot table. So let's go to the data sheet. Make sure you click anywhere within this table. Click on to insert. Click on to pivot table. And I want it in an existing worksheet. The location is in this pivot table. I want to park it here. Then hit enter on your keyboard and click OK. So click on this pivot table area. Find salary and drag it into values. You'll see that it gives you the sum of salary, salary. And that's what I want. So next, make, while making sure that you click here, go to pivot table analyze, go to pivot table name, and change the name to pivot table salary. Then click anywhere onto this sheet. Now let's go back to my dashboard. I want to pull the total salary for my pivot table. So make sure I click onto here, enter the equal sign, go to the pivot table sheet and link it to the total salary, hit enter. So as you can see, here's my total salary. We can format it 
by going to home and change the format from general let's change it to currency and i want to remove the decimal points and i want to center align it next let's add the average compile compile ratio and let's create let's put this as yellow and the tick outside borders so similar step how do we draw the average compile ratio into this, this dashboard we need to create another pivot table so let's again go to data sheet click on anywhere in this table go to go to insert click on to pivot table click on to existing worksheet location go back go to this pivot table so let's click it here and hit enter on your keyboard and press ok ok so now let's look for compile ratio Okay, drag this into the values. So it gives me the sum of compile ratio. I don't want that. I want average. So I click onto it. Value setting, click average and click OK. So we have the average compile ratio. Now let's go to pivot table analyze, pivot table, the name. I want to call it pivot table compile ratio then click anywhere here so now let's go back to the dashboard and i want to pull up the average compile ratio from my pivot table i do that by entering the equal sign go back to my pivot table and link it to average compile ratio and hit enter So now let's format this by going to the home menu. Go to here. I want it in number format. And yes, two decimal point is fine. Center align it. All right. Your... So now your dashboard is taking shape very nicely. Okay, let's shift this a little bit. Here. Now I'm going to show you how to add this uh, slicer, agenda slicer, so that we can slice all this data by gender. To do that, you can click on any pivot table. So this is a pivot table, this is a pivot table. So these are all pivot tables and you also have your pivot tables all here. All right, so you can click on, click on any pivot table. I will click on the tenure pivot table and go to pivot table analyze and here I can see insert slicer so click onto it so I want to add the slicer for gender you have a few slices here I want to add gender so I just click on gender and click on OK so I have the gender slicer here I can adjust it here so now if I if you see that if I click on female the number changes this chart changes so the compile the average compile ratio is 1.0 for female so if i click on male you will see that the compile ratio is 0 0.97 so females are paid better than males in this company i can clear the filter by clicking this cross clear filter sign and it shows the whole population again now we have the gender compile ratio for both male and female. Now notice that when I click on female or male, the numbers in the other dashboard here, it doesn't change. Right? All here doesn't change. It's only these two tables that change. 
This is because this gender slicer is only linked to this tenure pivot table. But I don't want to just work with the tender with this tenure pivot table. I want the slicer to work with with all the pivot tables. All right. So to fix this, click on this gender slicer. Go to the slicer menu. Click on report connections, and here you will see all the pivot tables that I have named. The pivot table age is this, pivot table rating is this, pivot tenure is this, and the other pivot table is in this other tab. All right, so I want Slicer to work with all these pivot table, not just this pivot table tenure. So to fix this, Click onto all the pivot table here. So we want to connect with all of it here and click OK. So now when I click on female, all the numbers changes. When I click on male, all the number changes. All right? So now let's compare the age for male and female. So if I click onto male, you'll see that the average age for male is 40. If you click onto female, you'll see that the average age for female is 45. So females are older than male. Now let's compare the ratings for male and female. So if I click onto male, you'll see that the average rating is 2.9. If I click onto female, you see that the average rating is 3.34. So females are rated higher than males in this organization. Let's now compare the compile ratio for male and female. So if I click onto male, you'll see that the average compile ratio is 0 0.97. If I click on the female, the average compile ratio is 1.0. So females are paid higher than male in this company. So you can resize this slicer by dragging it however you you want. And let's clear the filter by clicking onto here, clear filter, this cross sign here. So next, now we have a gender slicer. Let's add a department slicer so that we can slice the data by department. To do that, you can click onto any pivot table, but I will click on the rating pivot table. Then go to pivot table analyze and click on insert slicer so i want to add the slicer for department so i will click onto the department and click ok let's drag this here and let's uh, resize it resize it here so now if i click onto finance All right, you will see here there are 14 staff here. If I click onto HR, okay, it happens to be 14 as well. And if I click onto IT, you see that there is 11 staff. So again, notice when I click on all these different departments, the numbers in all these dashboard, all the other dashboard and charts, it doesn't change. This is again because this department slicer is only linked to this rating pivot table. So again, to link this department slicer to all the other pivot tables and charts, click on this department slicer, click on report connections, and tick all the pivot tables here. Let's tick everything. We want to link everything up. Click on to OK. So now when I click on a different department, you see, every number in the dashboard and chart changes. When I click this, everything changes. Right? So you can resize this however you want, but let me keep it to here. And then you can clear the filter by clicking onto this cross. Right? So now, we can touch up the dashboard. Like I want to, if I want to size this, these are all different sizes. 
by selecting these columns and press holding on to control on the keyboard. All right. And then I right click column width. I can put say uh, 13 and okay. Oops, looks like it's too much. Hmm. Okay, so now they are of equal sizes and then uh, let me center this whole thing and I can bow it. All right, that's it. This is my interactive HR dashboard. So I've shown you how to build an interactive HR dashboard using Excel. Hopefully you find this video useful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. If you are not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you'll get notified about similar videos that we upload. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the HR Diary channel.